Hello and welcome to, well, not necessarily a how I paint things. Uh, what I'm doing today is just saying hi. You know, I'm back. Uh, you may have noticed I was gone a little longer than expected. <laughs> the whole uh, COVID-19 situation uh, actually ended up with me stuck on the wrong side of the planet. So unfortunately, my vacation was extended by almost a month. And, you know, it's one thing to say that, hey, it was extra vacation. Except for the fact in New Zealand's very stringent lockdown uh, protocols, it was not really a vacation of any description. So I was not able to paint anything for a long time. And what I want to do today is just go through, you know, getting back in the swing of things. This fella here, he is a 3D printed miniature. And I'm sure, you know, some of you are going to recognize the Talon influence on this chap here. If you did want to go ahead and, you know, make your own army of these guys, then why not? Uh, these come courtesy of Reptilian Overlords, and I will drop a link to them in the description below. Uh, worth pointing out as well, this is not uh, paid, what's the word, paid promotion or anything. I just really like what they're doing. And, uh, you know, I've had some really good results, and I think there's some great stuff out there. If you're looking into 3D printing for yourself at home, then these guys are a great source of some STL files for familiar looking <laughs> Imperial Guardsmen. Now, this torso that I've got uh, would have fit quite happily onto a standard plastic Cadian set of legs. The arms and such are all designed that the normal stuff would fit there too. But I thought it would be cool just to go ahead and print a whole bunch of stuff out and make something a little bit more unique. So without any further waffling around, uh, what I'll do is I'll get straight into it. Uh, I'm not going to bother listing the paints or anything in the description today because this is going to be a little bit less formal, shall we say. Uh, I'm just going to chatter away, share some bits as we go, and hopefully you'll find this interesting. Uh, there are one or two little blips with the camera throughout this video, so, you know, bear in mind it's been a while since I've either painted or recorded anything, so be gentle with me. Now as you can see, I've started with a primer of Xandri Dust, but you could use just about anything here. The STL files for this fella, uh, the torsos in particular, they are actually marketed as uh, Desert Raiders, but I reckon you could do them for a lot of different things. You might want kind of a post-apocalyptic look. Um, you know, if you were to do them in sort of more beige and terracotta tones, maybe a little bit of red, you could even have them looking like uh, Khan's, <laughs> Khan's super soldiers in uh, The Wrath of Khan. Uh, I think that would actually look pretty cool too. But because I do want to sort of stick to, uh, you know, what I know, let's say, I'm going to do these guys looking kind of like the Talon. So with my uh, Xandri Dust primer down, what I'm going to do first of all is do a dry brush of Tyrant Skull. So I'll just prep my brush up. I've got one of my old uh, cheap brushes. And I don't really need to be terribly careful with this. Um, honestly, all I'm looking to do is to brighten up some of these areas of color. You'll see I'm being fairly generous with it. Um, it doesn't matter too much if I end up getting this on areas of his uniform, like his skin or his armor. It doesn't matter too much. We're going to come back and do some more of those anyway. So let's just go around. Be quite generous with this. So yeah, this is the first model I have dry brushed <laughs> since I got back home. Um, you know, those of you who are wondering where I was, I was stuck on the wrong side of the planet. Uh, I was on vacation, as you may have seen, and uh, unfortunately the coronavirus uh, restrictions and what have you, travel restrictions and all that, uh, they came in and then suddenly I was stuck in New Zealand. I'm sure some of you will point out, well, there are worse places to be stuck. and yeah, that's true, but uh, I was still stuck <laughs> with none of my gear, you know, uh, with my family. So I was actually quite lucky to be where I was. Uh, you know, other folks haven't been quite as fortunate to be caught out in some of the areas that they have been, whereas I was able to help my grandparents, um, you know, during lockdown period in New Zealand. But it did mean I wasn't able to paint anything. And that started to get to me. I'll, I'll be perfectly honest, <laughs> I was surprised how much I actually missed being able to paint whenever the urge struck. So, you know, having the chance to get back here, do some dry brushing, oh yes. As you can see, I'm being very generous. I actually want the clothing itself to be mostly Tyrant Skull and instead leave 
the shading of the recesses. So let's finish that off. Come back and have a look once that's done how I'm satisfied. Now with that done, I'm going to move on to the next largest area of color, which is going to be his webbing, his pack, and that sort of thing. For that, I'm going to use Rakarth Flesh. Uh, what I want is kind of a faded khaki kind of appearance. Uh, this stuff works really well as a sort of canvas substitute. So I'm going to do all of his pack in this. Um, I'm also going to do his gaiters in this canvas color as well. Uh, I'm not too fussed if I get any on his boots, but I do want to avoid his trousers. Um, if I wanted to paint his trousers a different color, it wouldn't matter too much, but I want all of his clothing to be pretty much the same color. So let's just go around now. Um, hmm. Should I do his gloves in this as well? No, I'll do his gloves a different color. But all of the webbing, being careful in there, uh, just cruise around now, and I will do that in Rakarth Flesh. Now I realized as I was putting on the uh, Rakarth Flesh that because I was going to do his uh, headscarf in a sort of lighter beige color, uh, putting some Rakarth Flesh on there first was going to make this next step easier. I've got some wraith bone, and what I'm going to do is go over the Rakarth Flesh in these areas and just brighten that up a little bit more. Uh, you'll see it's not really perfect coverage, so I might need to come around and give this a second coat. But whatever the case, you're the boss of that. You can decide how much of this you need. Now, after a couple of coats, our wraith bone is nice and smooth. Now, hindsight being 2020, what I probably should have done would have been to paint the skin first and then do the scarf. But I've got here a small layer brush. You don't see me use these very often. <laughs> and I've got a Kedian flesh tone as well. And what I'm going to do is just carefully blip in the little bit of his face that we can see. Uh, if I do make any mistakes, and I'm starting to kind of concerned that I will, uh, all I need to do is go back to that wraith bone. Now with that done, what I've got is a little Mournfang brown. And I'm going to paint in all of the wooden details on his rifle. Now of course, what's wood and what isn't is entirely up to you. These are made up spaceman guns. <laughs> but I tend to think, you know, go with what you think looks best. Uh, this is also going to add a little bit of warmth to the model. Because you'll see we've used quite washed out, you know, fairly pale colors so far. So let's go ahead, go up to about mm, there. And I hope you guys don't mind, you know, as I am getting back into the swing of things here, might not be holding it in the perfect position to see, or you know, things might be going all over the show. <laughs> uh, but, you know, it's been a little while for me too, so hopefully you guys will bear with me. Uh, I'm just looking to have some fun here. Now we can move on to the metal areas. For this, I'm going to use Lead Belcher. Uh, recently, I've been really enjoying Iron Hand Steel, but uh, for this, I think I want a slightly darker finish, and Lead Belcher is going to be perfect for that. So this is not terribly complex. Uh, all we're going to do, make sure there's a little bit of water in my paint, uh, make sure that you're not missing things like this respirator container thing he's got on his pack here. Uh, and he's got, to me, what looks like a little radio whoops, up on his shoulder here too. So I'll just blip that in silver as well. And any silver details, let's fill them in now. Now in doing the silver, I also decided to do the hose running from his respirator pack sort of under his mask in silver too. So there's all of those details done. What we'll do now is move on to the uh, sort of harder wearing cloth canvas, what have you. The trick here, sort of inspired by, you know, real military, uh, it can be quite bland. <laughs> you know, the whole point is for these guys not to stand out. So I've got my Steel Legion drab, and I'm going for that sort of, oh, I guess you could say modern warfare look with these guys. So I'm going to do his boots, and those aren't finished yet, but we'll come back to those, and his gloves as well. Anything that's going to be that sort of, because I don't want to use leather, you see. While I'm thinking about it, if you were to put leather on here, it wouldn't really make sense. If you're looking for a dude who looks like he's wearing a lot of gear for a very hot climate, leather isn't the most comfortable <laughs> choice that you could go for. So this is why I'm looking, I want to 
sort of a tough cloth. And uh, Steel Legion Drab is going to help us sell that look. Now, thinking still along the lines of modern military gear, if you look at most uniforms, you know, the metallic parts are normally the same sort of color as the uniform. So what I'm going to do here, I've got my Zandri Dust, and I'm going back over these little shoulder pads he's got. Because we spent, you know, the, the first stage was to put as much uh, Tyrant Skull as we did all over the uniform, by going back with the flat color for Tyrant, uh, not Tyrant Skull, for Zandri Dust, I'm going to make these look like hard armor plates that are nonetheless essentially the same color. So they won't stand out as being sort of painted a different color. Oh, good Lord. I'm just repeating myself here. Um, the idea is that they're going to look like they're all the same, you know, set of clothing without having to add another color to the uniform. Now, you might notice our chap here has actually got a belt around his waist. Now, this would be where I would normally suggest putting something like a, a company color. So if you're painting these guys up as Imperial Guard, you might say, oh, well, I'll do these red for A company and blue for B company or whatever. I'm going to go, I've got Death Guard green here. And I think this sort of pallid, pale, washed out green is going to work really well. It won't draw attention to the belt, but it will make it stand out just enough that it looks like something added to the uniform. So I'm just going to be a little bit careful going around under here. Come back once that's done. Now with his belt done, I then went and got myself some Retributor armor and a little bit of black just to paint in this here uh, cable. You could use any old color you fancy though. I've just used those to pop off those couple of extra details. What I'm going to do now is get my friend and yours Agrax Earthshade. I've given this a really good shake uh, to make sure that it doesn't go glossy uh, in the recesses. And I'm just going to load up my medium shade brush and start applying this quite generously over the whole model. So take your time, go around now, and you want to make sure that you are getting this into all the recesses. It's very important. Any areas where you think it's going to pull a bit much, and you know you're going to end up with too much, uh, just while your brush is still wet, you, know, you can move it around from areas like that where you think there's going to be too much. But whatever the case, I'm going to go around now and let's come back and see what this looks like once it's had about well, half an hour to dry. As I'm fond of saying, what a difference a shade makes, eh? <laughs> what I'm going to do now is just a couple of highlights to bring out some of these areas of detail that I really want to look a little tidier. So I've gone back to some wraith bone. I've got some fresh out of the pot, just a little bit of water. And what we'll do now is just a couple of highlights on here and to bring out some of the shape of this a little bit more precisely. So take your time. You want to leave the darker color in the recesses. Now that can be a little time consuming because I have gone over some areas twice. But I think you don't really want a perfect highlight with clothing uh, because what you're going to end up with then is a very sterile look. Whereas I think some areas that are a little more faded and you can see the highlight isn't perfect, they give it a slightly more natural kind of roughened appearance. What I'm going to do now though, is instead of a highlight, we're going to do some chipping effects on the armor plates. There's not many of these, so you know we don't need to go overboard with it. What I've got is just some Rhinox hide, and I'm just going to do, just do a little line across the section there. Get a little bit more paint, because that's not really doing much. And then we'll just do a couple of dabbed on lines. So we get this irregular brown chip on the edge there. What I'll do is a little on the other side too. We don't need to do very much of this. We just want to use this to help sell the look that these are made of metal uh, and painted to match the rest of the uniform. Then we'll get a little bit of a metallic color. In this case, I've got Stormhost Silver. So what we're going to do is just go right to the edges. And you're really just looking to dab this so that it looks like you've got a very rough broken bit of metal there. Uh, what I'll do at the same time is to highlight my metal areas. And with Stormhouse Silver, you can afford to be fairly sparing with this. 
Now, if you do want to go as far as highlighting boots and gloves, then a little bit of Bane Blade Brown will do the job here. Uh, in this case, though, I would suggest you want to be fairly sparing with it, as this is quite a bright colour. So just areas like the backs of knuckles, extreme edges of his gloves. Uh, personally, I'm not going to do any on his boots, though. And just a little bit of Nurgling Green on some of the green areas. Help sell the folds in that. Now what we'll do for the canvas is to go back to Rakarth Flesh. And instead of just highlighting the very edges, what we'll do is sort of block in most of these areas again. But being fairly rough with the highlights. We want this to look a little lived in. Now I'll be honest, it would be a rare occasion I'd actually spend this much time on a miniature, especially bulk infantry for guard. <laughs> but what I've got now is a little screaming skull, and I'm just going to go to the very edges of some of these areas of the uniform, just to add a bit more brightness to some of these highlights that the uh, dry brush would have caught. So using your dry brush as a guide, you can find those edges that you want to pop just a little bit more. And there we have it, with his base applied, our fellow is ready to hit the table. Um, I've actually really enjoyed painting this. It was really nice to get back into the swing of things. And like I said, I hope you guys will forgive just a couple of uh, <laughs> hiccups along the way. Um, I'm quite pleased with the result. Um, honestly, it's a little tricky to find a way to make so much brown and beige look interesting. But I hope, you know, with just a couple of little bits along the way, like this armor chipping or what have you, Maybe that can help you find some ways to do it yourself. Uh, so again, shout out to Reptilian Overlord, uh, the fellows who are responsible for the STL files. Uh, and again, it's worth pointing out, this is printed on a home machine. This is an Elegoo Mars. Uh, they're currently retailing 230 euros. So uh, they are cheaper than the old Ender 3. Getting into resin printing is a hobby in and of itself. So, you know, be prepared to do a bit of research, but it is... Not out of reach of most folks, you know, looking to expand into a new hobby. Uh, the advent of water-soluble resins, so ones that you can rinse off without needing isopropyl alcohol, means that, you know, cleanup and stuff is going to be a lot more simple in the future, I think. So, as always, any questions or anything, guys, feel free. Drop them in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Facebook are both linked there, too. So thank you very much for your time. I'll see you guys again soon.